The JSE-listed new corp capital began trading on the platinum and precious metal sector of the JSE's main board today. And of course, uh, the reverse listing that's coming to the fore now, seeing this company renamed as Sable Platinum. And of course, Sable Platinum is an exploration company with a primary target within the Platinum Metals Group. Joining us to discuss this further is James Allen. He's CEO of Sable Platinum. Thanks so much, James, for joining us uh, this morning. Let's get straight into uh, the rationale for listing right now. I mean, Sable Platinum, as I said, an exploration uh, company in the platinum sector uh, with prospecting rights. It's got to be tough being a platinum explorer at this stage. Morning, Alicia. Morning, David. Um, certainly, it's a big day for us to list on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Uh, we started the company six years ago. Uh, and it's taken us a long time to get here. We started the listing process in September last year uh, when we had a meeting with a, an asset manager um, who was looking to put some capital into the company and he yep. suggested that we reverse into uh, New Corp Capital which was a listed cash shell of which he owned 38%. Uh, the process has taken us some time to get to this point but it's critically important for us to have a listed vehicle uh, with which to raise further capital to fund our exploration. Uh, we've had discussions with a number of fund managers and individuals, um, internationally and locally, and they've all said that they are quite keen to, to back us in the platinum space, uh, but they need a listed vehicle in terms of their various mandates. So that's the major rationale for, for listing, is to give us a listed vehicle and provide exposure for the company which you are helping give us today. Thank you. James, uh, beyond, uh, we'll look at some of the detail of uh, where you're going to explore and what kind of mix of metals you're looking at, but uh, it may be the best possible time to list in a way when everyone's gloomy and uh, the platinum oversupply has reduced and uh, it's expected to reduce perhaps quicker than was expected with all the issues that have been going on in the sector. But uh, the kind of interest you're getting indicates that uh, platinum, we've got most of it in South Africa, and eventually there's going to be demand again. You wouldn't be doing this. Uh, so you've got to have a view on future demand of platinum. Absolutely. David, I think you've, you've covered you know, some of the major points there. Uh, we started the year with the forecast of a platinum surplus in the market, and we're ending the year with Johnson Matthey, the, who are the world's platinum experts, saying that there's a deficit in the market. Um, this has been taken out through production disruptions this year. So the outlook for platinum and the platinum price is significantly better. South Africa produces 75% of the world's platinum. So if you want to be in the platinum space, you have to be in South Africa. Platinum, as you know, is critically important in terms of going into auto catalysts, uh, which are the uh, bricks that go underneath the cars and clean the exhaust fumes. And this is required legislation um, within places like North America, Europe, China, India, etc. And certainly the demand for platinum is there. Uh, the platinum uh, supply and demand situation is significantly better now than it was earlier this year. We also believe that we have seen the bottom of the platinum market. Um, looking at the various charts, um, looking at share prices, etc., we think the market bottomed probably September um, and is coming off a, a low base. We think this is a great time for investors to be getting into a platinum company, especially a platinum exploration company that has got great prospects. So we think it'll be up from here, David, and it certainly sounds like you believe so too. <laughs> James, of course, uh, the optimism seems to be uh, you know, rife this morning. Of course, there's a deficit uh, in the platinum market for a reason, and that's because of all the challenges that we face in actually getting the stuff out of the ground here in South Africa in particular. So just how challenging an environment are you operating in from your experience? Alicia, at the moment we're an exploration company. So we don't have a large workforce. Um, we've got 16 employees altogether. Uh, we are exploring, we are doing exploration drilling. Uh, we're proving up the ore bodies on our properties. Uh, so we don't have to contend with the, the labor issues that are prevalent in the market at the moment. And these labor issues will be resolved. Uh, you know, South Africa and the South African mining industry has gone through very tough times before. And I'm confident that the various executives and leaders of the labor, labor movements uh, will get their heads together and this will be resolved in due course. So certainly we think that by the time we come into production, um, the situation will be significantly better for, for Sable Platinum. James, you're a, a mining engineer yourself and obviously also an entrepreneur. You must have watched with great interest here what's been happening in the sector and uh, indeed the, the South African mining sector. So I'm asking you now to sort of 
get above your own listing for a moment and just perhaps be a mining engineer and perhaps be a commentator on the sector. There's been a lot of talk about uh, confidence in the future, labour issues, uh, the regulatory environment that you have to operate in. Uh, what's your sense of where we're going? Because there's been a lot of gloom and doom and pessimism and saying that the signals that investors are getting from South Africa, particularly in the resources sector, are not the right ones. David, I think the, you know, the, the view on what's happened in South Africa in the last six months, there are many commentators out there who are probably better qualified than myself to, 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 to comment on what's been happening. But certainly my take on it is that um, it's been a political situation. Um, there's been a, um, a hotly contested um, fight between uh, a new union, AMCU, um, and I say new union in inverted commas, and the National Union of Mine Workers. And they've been fighting a turf war. Um, they've been promising uh, the workers uh, you know, various things. We think that some of these promises are not realistic um, and don't fit with the economies. You know, if you push your labor costs up too high, you are then going to close operations down and people will lose jobs. So I think some sanity will return to the market. Uh, the bottom line is that 75% of the world's platinum comes from South Africa and mining engineers and labor will have to put their heads together yeah. to see how they get this out of the ground profitably. James, having said all of that and with the confidence that you've certainly put on the table when it comes to the South African mining space, are you looking uh, beyond South Africa's borders or are your interests within the platinum mining sector confined to South Africa's borders? Right at the moment, uh, we're very much bound by South Africa. Um, it's the best sp space in the world uh, for platinum. I know a lot of the, the majors are looking at places like Zimbabwe. Uh, we will keep an eye on opportunities outside of the country, but right at the moment we've got five significant projects in South Africa and we think we've got our hands pretty full with those.